The Fujifilm X100 line are insanely popular cameras and they are fantastic fun to use, but I don't think they're actually the easiest camera systems to get started and get shooting with, even if you're a really experienced photographer. In this video, I'm going to share my settings for shooting with the Fujifilm X100 6. These are the settings that I've actually found easiest to transition from when normally I shoot with Sony Alpha systems. There are, of course, a whole plethora of ways to shoot using a camera like this. These are the settings that I've found that best fit me and my shooting style. So we're going to start strong with this list and this is actually something which I found buried in a YouTube comment section but I found unbelievably useful. So if you take anything away from this video probably take this one. The X100 6 and the X100V have uh, an inbuilt ND system. So it's just a four stop ND you can turn it on and off and it's obviously to assist like those days that are super super bright you can just limit the amount of light coming into your frame. Super useful tool but it is not that easy to turn on and off however you can at any time which I did not know you can use this lever right here the, the EVF lever you just hold that for three seconds and it will toggle on and off the ND on your camera unbelievably useful to have a speedy way to access and turn on your ND at literally essentially the touch of a button. Do me a favor, if you didn't know that one, drop the video a like and if you did, you can just write me in the comments. I'm still working on my Fuji recipes in terms of kind of picture profiles for this camera. So I'm not gonna be sharing recipe specifics in this video, but I will at the end share what's been working for me in terms of shooting with my Fuji, getting the kind of best colors out of it. Okay, so first up is display settings or setting custom display settings. And for the most part, you're gonna not need a lot of information on this screen that the Fujifilm X106 is going to come with out of the box. All right, so on our X100 here, we're gonna hit the menu button. It will take you to this main menu page. You're gonna to go to the spanner down here. You're gonna to go to your screen setup, and then you want the third page here. So we'll go down and we want display custom setting, as you can see here. We're gonna go into the, I'm not actually gonna to touch the OVF display, the optical viewfinder. I'm just gonna go for the LCD and the EVF for now. And these are the settings that I use. Obviously you can play around and find something that works for you, but I have focus frame selected so I can see where I'm focusing. I have the manual focus distance indicator. That is basically a control that lets you see how far away you are, as you can see. So like, you can see the slide at the bottom there, just moving around for your manual focus. And I find that unbelievably useful. Just so you can see how quite how far you can get an instant kind of look to see, all right, I'm right, I'm right at the front of my focus range or I'm right at the end of my focus range. So those are the only two I have there. I've got the exposure values here. So you'll be able to see your aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, kind of essential. I use the uh, exposure compensation scale so I can see uh, this scale up the side so I can see just how much exposure is within in my frame to see whether I'm kind of over or under at a glance. I have my focus mode on as well. I, a white balance, a quick view on film simulation so I can see which one I'm using if I am. Frames remaining so you can see how many photos are within the frame. Uh, the no storage media warning just so you can see whether, whether or not of course you have enough storage within your camera and then the battery level. And those are the only ones that I use and as you can see it is quite a clean setup. Exposure modes is a massive one on this camera and this for the most part is where I found almost like the biggest adjustment because I think there's a ton of different ways to shoot with this camera and get the best results and there's also a lot of opinions online in terms of like the best way to shoot with it. I myself end up going with uh, I guess a more traditional approach. I end up just going almost full manual so I just find it's the easiest way to actually set uh, and kind of get a feel for my photos and it's what has worked for me in the past. It's also what I do on a daily basis when shooting with other cameras. So I tend to just shoot full manual exposure modes, but setting this up on the Fuji is important. So first of all, I shoot in the T shutter speed priority mode. I believe it's that's the time shutter speed priority mode. Um, and for the uh, ISO, you lift this up, you can change your ISO value just like this. I go to C and there's a couple of reasons why that is. So the first will, will be when I'm in uh, the T shutter speed priority mode, I can use this scroll wheel to very quickly and easily, as you can see, change my shutter speed here. 
So that just automatically allows me to do that at a touch of a button. And then after putting the aperture control into C mode, if you go into menu, go into command dial setting, and then this value here, I changed to ISO. And what that means is I can very easily now change with this front dial here, change the ISO value. So I can move that up and down, and that gives me two very quick accesses to exposure values. I can move my aperture ring around nice and easily, and then I just know that I've got uh, a very, very fast, easy way to change ISO and shutter speed. I personally tend to avoid auto ISO. Don't get me wrong, it's a super useful tool and you can set up parameters so that you, you know, set a high ISO limit and a low ISO limit, but I just find that it is kind of easiest here to end up working with uh, an auto scroller, like the fact that you can manipulate both scroll wheels to select your shutter speed and your uh, ISO just means you're going to be getting the best settings possible for each image that you are taking. All right, so let's talk image quality here. There is a couple of controls that I would suggest you change. First of all, for me and my shooting style, I like to shoot raw and then I will play around with that file and edit it until I get the style that I like. But I also want the flexibility to be able to shoot a film emulation if I want. So I shoot with raw plus normal. I don't use raw plus fine because to be honest, if I'm uh, using a JPEG image, I'm going to be doing it to share on social media that's basically the only reason and I just don't think you need the fine image format so I would always just shoot raw plus normal and then the other thing is to change your uh, raw compression to lossless compressed so the raw files on the Fujifilm X106 it's got a new 40 megapixel sensor in this camera the files are massive like on a 128 gigabyte card I literally get like 1500 photos or 1200 photos is genuinely not very much like it's significantly bigger than uh, my Sony cameras they are an enormous resolution and you get a ton of data in the files but they are massive so I would suggest you switch to this compressed format it will double the amount of photos you can take on one card Focusing is really the other significant area that I found challenging with the X100 line when moving from more traditional camera systems. I think the autofocus on these systems has got significantly better, but I still don't think it's a world class. And to be honest, I think the control of the autofocus is also a challenge in itself. So I do switch between manual and single focus modes on the side here. When I'm working with manual, it's an important note that manual focus on this camera is not good, or at least, it's not convenient, it's not efficient to use. It's such a tiny little focus uh, ring. The peaking is not the best on this camera, so it's very easy to miss your manual focus zone. So the way that I shoot using manual focus, I really do it to just control the focus area as opposed to manually trying to find a target and focusing on it. So what I'll be doing, I will set a manual focus using the focus distance meter that we talked about earlier, and I will kind of fire from the hip in a drive mode that allows me to shoot continuously. So I'll walk past subjects or walk past subjects like this and I'm able to snap away the whole time and I know that if I walk slowly through that frame, through that area where say I've set a focus of two meters away, as long as I'm two meters from that subject snapping away continuously, I will get one frame that looks really great. If you're wanting a quick mode to change the drive mode like I uh, do, for instance, if I'm shooting a manual selection of uh, drive photos or I'm walking past a subject, you just do it like this. So you can go to three, I normally just do three frames a second, but you could go up all the way to uh, six frames a second or even on a high mode, you could go to 11 uh, or 10, 13 and 20 with a crop. But I just go to the low mode uh, just like that and that allows me to shoot in a drive mode of manual focus. There's a couple of manual focus controls that I would suggest you do. First of all is I would turn off pre-AF. Uh, that's just a mode that's more tailored towards beginners. So it's what that will be is it's going to focus automatically on any point when you point your camera at it in an autofocus mode. So I will turn that off. It might come uh, set to default on your camera. And then the other thing I would do is I would turn on MF AF. So I turn that on. And what that lets you do is even if you're in an autofocus mode like I would be now, you can half press your focus and, in, and then manually move your focus wheel. It will allow you to do a manual focus control 
even though you're in an autofocus mode. And that is quite useful because sometimes you just might be in a situation where that autofocus just isn't locking on quite in the way that you want, and you can very quickly fix that. And there's a couple of autofocus controls that I change. I kind of tend to go between single point AF and wide point AF, but for the most part, I do use single point AF on this camera. And the way that I do that is in here in AF mode, I go to single point, as you can see, and then we go into focus area. By scrolling this button, you can dictate the size of that frame that you want. So I normally go for not the, the smallest, the one up from the smallest, and then I'm able to very easily control that focus point just like that. Some people turn their controls off for this. I actually quite like it. I don't tend to kind of hit it, um, which is why people normally switch it off because they realize that they're trying to take a shot and their focus points all the way up here. I haven't experienced too much problem with that until I do. Maybe I'll kind of fix that. But the other option for how I shoot as well, you go to here, you go to zone, and I've got the zone set to a quite a nice kind of wide zone just like this. And those are the two modes that I use. It's all quite fairly easy, to be honest. Another thing to do here definitely is to turn off your touchscreen controls. I don't find the touchscreen particularly useful on the X100V. It's a very tactile experience of camera. And for me, that also, that almost like becomes a contradictory experience. I'm tapping to focus and tapping to changing things. It's also very, very easy to change your focus point using the touchscreen and doing that unintentionally. So I just turn the touchscreen off. You can do that like this. All you're gonna do is you're gonna go along to the bottom here. We're going to go to button dial setting, scroll down, right down to the bottom, touchscreen setting, and just turn basically them off. Uh, apart from the media controls, because obviously you might want that on to be able to uh, swipe through photos. Okay, so in terms of recipes, picture profiles, and colors out of the Fujifilm X106, like I said, this is a bit of a kind of balancing act. You have to find what works for you and recipes and styles that you like. I actually really enjoy editing photos. Uh, this is something which I, this is kind of like an activity I like to do. If I've gone and shot street photos, more like photos for a passion project, I really enjoy putting those photos on my computer and editing them and kind of finding a, finding a style that works. And that's not to say I won't shoot with film emulation occasionally uh, to try and find something which just works straight out of camera but for the most part I've been loading my photos into Lightroom and I've been editing them using really nice images film presets because this is a style that I'm easily able to control and find a look and feel that I love but also I can change the picture profile nice and easily. It's a quick note that you can of course also within Adobe Lightroom choose and select uh, the custom Fuji film emulations and kind of choose them for each individual photo from your raw folder. So you can easily do this using the profile selector in Lightroom. So you can also do this, but I myself have been using really nice images. I will link it down below in the description if you are curious. Hopefully sharing my perspective on some of these settings has been interesting. If you have any top tips for shooting with the Fuji X100 series, please leave them down below and I'll catch you next time.